everyone welcome back to my channel if you're new here thanks for stopping by if you enjoy the content that you find on my channel please consider subscribing so we are in the throes of peach season actually if you live in the northern part of the united states like i do here in ohio we're just starting to get some of our own peaches but if you're fortunate enough to live in the south you have had um, some fresh peaches for a while now but i'm going to be bringing you a yummy peach recipe today. It's gonna to be coming from the National Center of Home Food Preservation. We are gonna be making a yummy peach fruit topping. This is fantastic on top of pancakes, waffles, ice cream, a cake, any type of dessert. If you're like me and just want something a little bit sweet after dinner, a spoonful straight from the jar works really well too. If you've hung around my channel very much, you know that I can rarely leave a recipe alone as is. I like to make safe changes and today's gonna be no different. Anytime I'm making or canning up something fruity, I love to add liqueur to it. So today to make my peach topping just a little bit yummier and add a little bit something extra, I'm gonna be using some peach schnapps in mine at the end. Um, if you don't like peach schnapps, you don't have to use that. If you don't want the alcohol in it at all, you can totally skip it, but peach schnapps is delicious in it. It really amps up the peach flavor. You could also use bourbon, you could use amaretto, any type of liqueur that appeals to you, you could add a couple tablespoons to this recipe just to give it a little something extra. Um, um, also wanted to mention for those of you who are planning for the holiday gifting season, this would make a fantastic gift. Um, this is a recipe that is canned in either pints or half pints. The processing time is the same for either one. This is a water bath canning recipe, so you can safely water bath or steam can it. If you guys have hung around my channel very much, you know that I love steam canning. I am gonna be demonstrating steam canning today, but you can also water bath can it. Um, it is a small batch, um, and like I stated before, I believe I said that it, we can do it in pints or half pint jars. The processing the time is the same for either one. You also need just very few ingredients, which is another thing that I love about this recipe. You need eight cups of mashed ripe yellow peaches. A note on peaches, please do not use white flesh peaches for this recipe. It is not safe to can white flesh peaches or nectarines. So please keep that in mind. Make sure you are using yellow to be safe. Um, the eight cups mashed as about six to six and a quarter pounds of fresh peaches as purchased. Um, and then you're going to measure out eight cups after you mash them. You need three cups of sugar. A word on sugar, you can use brown sugar, you can use white granulated sugar, you can use a combination, all make a lovely result. Um, in this case, um, for this video, I did demonstrate using all granulated sugar, but like I said, you can use one or the other or a combination, it's entirely up to you. And then we also need four tablespoons of bottled lemon juice. Yes, we do need to use bottled lemon juice here for safety, so please make sure you are using bottled lemon juice and not fresh. Now, another safe change you can make besides adding the liqueur to it is you could totally add whatever dried spices you like. So if you're trying to bring out some of those warmer, spicy flavors that go well with peach, you could use cinnamon, you could use star anise, you could use nutmeg. Um, all spice works well too. So any type of spice that you would use in peach cobbler or in peach pie would be appropriate here and you can adjust to your taste. Vanilla or vanilla bean would also be really nice in the background here. So feel free to get creative in that way. Um, when I tested this recipe, I did note that mine was kind of on the thinner side. So, um, if you want a thicker sauce, you could, when you open a jar, you can always use a little bit of a cornstarch slurry and heat it um, up to boiling and that will help thicken it some for you. I think it's a great texture to use almost like a pancake, a chunky pancake syrup or waffle syrup is really great. But if you want a thicker texture, like I said, you can use a cornstarch slurry. The texture is also going to be dictated by the type of peaches that you use. Some are juicier than others and have a little bit different texture to them. So those are all things that are variable, um, but even if it is on the thinner side, it is totally delicious. Um, for those of you who like to can using low sugar or less sugar, I will leave links on how to do that. You can certainly use less sugar here. The sugar is not used for safety. It's used just 
to make this really to make the sauce for the peaches um, and also just note that I wouldn't go to no sugar sugar does play a role as far as preserving the texture and the color of fruits when we can them up so I would not try to make this a no sugar peach topping uh, low sugar I'd be comfortable with because the sugar does help preserve the texture and the color of the peaches as it sits on your shelf and it is so pretty in the jar you guys like I said this would make a great gift for the holidays so I'm going to bring you in close and we're going to get started Okay guys, we're gonna start by prepping our peaches. And what I've done is I have six cups of water here and for every cup of water, um, I'm using one teaspoon of the Ball Fresh Fruit Produce Protector. Um, that just will help keep them from turning brown. You can use any commercial um, fruit protector that you want to. I just had the Ball one on hand and I've added a teaspoon of it to every cup of water that I've used here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to peel my peaches. Now a couple, you have a couple of options here. I'm just going to peel and slice mine fresh just like this, but you can, if um, you're having a hard time peeling them, you can always blanch them instead for just a couple seconds in a pot of boiling water and then the skins will slide right off. So mine are going to be pretty easy to peel like this. So I just cut them in half. And then I'm going to just use a paring knife to remove my peeling and then slice them. But like I said, you could blanch them instead. Okay, once you have all your peaches uh, sliced and peeled, you're going to let them drain thoroughly if you've used the fresh fruit protector on them. So I've drained my peaches, I've put them on a baking sheet with sides, and now we're going to use a potato masher to mash them to the consistency that we want our fruit topping to be. So um, the instructions on the National Center of Home Food Preservation's website says to not use a blender or a food processor. To do this part, they want you to do it by hand. Using a food processor will incorporate air and we don't want that in our fruit topping. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my potato masher and give my peaches a good mash. And we want to end up with about eight cups. Okay guys, I have my peaches all mashed. As you can tell, I left a little bit of texture to mine. You can mash them to whatever texture you prefer, um, but you wanna end up with about eight cups. So once we have that, to that, we are going to add four tablespoons of bottled lemon juice. Yes, you need to new use bottled lemon juice here. And we're going to add three cups of granulated sugar. If you do not want to use white sugar, you could use brown sugar here. It would give a really nice depth of flavor. Um, if you wanted to use brown, you could use a combination of both brown and white. That's entirely up to you. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring all this up to a boil. You want to make sure that you are stirring frequently so that nothing burns or scorches on the bottom. Um, the other thing that you could do at this point is you could season it any way you wanted to. You could add some vanilla bean, you could add some cinnamon, you could add some allspice, some nutmeg, any of those nice warm spices that you like with peaches, you could add here any type of extract would work fantastic. We are going to give ours a little bit of a peachy boost with the peach schnapps that I talked about at the beginning of the video. If you want more of the liquor to cook off, you can add it now. I'm going to add mine at the end uh, when we're done. So we're gonna bring all of this up to a boil and we're gonna let it boil for about five minutes. You definitely want it completely heated through. And while that's happening, I'm gonna get my canner and my jars ready. Okay guys, my peach topping, I brought it up to a full boil. I've been boiling almost five minutes. I'm gonna turn my heat off and now I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of my yummy peach schnapps. We're gonna give that a stir. I've also turned off my heat. Um, what you can do now is if you wanna get rid of the foam, you can go ahead and skim that off and then we are all set for the canning process. 
Okay guys, we are ready for canning. I have three quarts of simmering water in the bottom of my steam canner. You can steam can or water bath can this. If you are water bath canning, make sure you have enough water in your canner to cover your jars by at least an inch. So I'm steam canning. I have three quarts of simmering water in the bottom of my steam canner according to my canner's instructions. I'm starting with hot jars. I'm using half pint. We're going to fill them to half inch head space. So next we're going to use a debubbling tool, plastic butter knife or chopstick to release any air bubbles. Just poke around your jar, check your head space, make sure it's around a, a half of an inch. Um, a lot of times your head space will change. You can add more if you need to, to remain at your half inch head space. We're gonna take a paper towel dipped in white vinegar we're gonna clean our rims. You wanna make sure that the rims are nice and clean so that nothing interferes with a good seal. And you're going to center your lid. Add your bands to fingertip tight. And in the canner they go. Okay guys, um, I have all of my jars in my canner. I'm bringing my canner up to temperature here. When I get in the green zone, I will start my timing for my steam canner. If you're a water bath canning, make sure you bring your water up to a full rolling boil before you start your processing time. We are going to process for 15 minutes um, and then let our jars sit in our canner for about five to 10 minutes and then they will be all done and I will bring you back. Okay hey guys, we are all done. I processed for the 15 15 minutes um, like I told you then I let my jars sit in my canner for a little bit to cool slowly um, and then this is what it looks like now I do want you to notice that there is what we refer to as fruit float our fruit is floating on top of the syrup that we created with the sugar that is totally normal please do not be alarmed by that um, it's a totally normal thing that happens often in canning and you will hear us refer to it as fruit float um, one of the reasons for bringing this up to a boil is to help to release some of the air from the peaches um, to keep them from doing that. But there's only so much you can do and a lot of it depends on the variety of the peaches that you used as well. So don't be alarmed by that. It's totally fine, totally safe, totally normal uh, for that to happen. Anyway, I appreciate you guys coming along with me today. If you, As always, if you have any comments or questions, leave them for me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you next time. Have a fantastic day.